Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Um, before the video begins, the longer video, uh, there's something I forgot to mention while doing the video, is I actually had to change some settings. Basically, I had to change it to bone, basically, the four influences, and I had to do vertex color. That's what I had to switch it to. And when you switch it to vertex color, you have to delete the previous textures that were done when you baked it in bone. The, watch this now and just do what I'm saying now when it comes up just set it to the vertex color and it'll only make two textures the two textures will be the things that drive everything and then you're good from there i just wanted to put this update here um i hope this video is helpful there's a lot of pausing in it i'm sorry because there's i was doing it on the fly and i was trying to remember and recall everything that i did previously so i hope this has helpful to everybody um welcome to the vertex animation system uh give you know go ahead and check out thomas's uh tool and stuff I'll link it in the description and you all have a wonderful day hello everyone welcome to the Raphael Studios channel this is Aaron I know it's been a little bit but um, basically I'm here with the tutorial that I'm going to be teaching this is the vertex animation system I'm gonna be showing it's the one that will be in the link in the description all right um, first you're gonna what you're gonna to want to do is make sure in your epic launcher that you have the vertex animation system installed for your specific engine that you're using this one is 5.4, that's what I'm using for this. And uh, basically with it, you just make sure to launch up your, uh, your project that you start up and then you want to enable it. Right here, it's a plugin that you would have to enable. So you just go ahead and enable the plugin and you should be good to go from there. All right, so what we're going to do is basically start off at the very beginning. We have our, ver we have our night base here. This is the model I'm going to be using to start the vertex animation system and then as well explain it at, uh, with uh what do you oh, hold on my brain's sorry i'm a little tired i meant that i'm pushing through though um basically the different models which you will be using variants the variants of the models so basically that's what i'm going to be showing is how to create the profile and then also how to make variants and also the material needed and everything for you to do that so at the very beginning as you saw we had the night base there so what you're going to do is you select the model that you're wanting to use you right click and then you're going to go down to scripted asset actions and then it'll pop up with the vertex animation and you want to create profile it'll instantly create a profile for you as well as attach it to your night model and if you're ever needing to remove it from the night model or ba well basically from whatever model you're working with you would go down to skeletal mesh within your asset details and then you would find the one that says vertex animation and you would just simply delete it right here on the little arrow so that's what you would do so but otherwise now our night set it has the vertex animation system in it so we go back over and we go to the actual base file so in here in the base file like there's certain settings that i personally have like a good example like i stick with bone but there's a like bone or vertex as well as there's vertex colors, there's texture, and personally, if I'm right, I usually use, if I remember right, actually I want to say I want to put on texture, because that's usually what I use if I understand that correctly, remember it correctly. Okay, and I usually do four influences for my models and stuff, it depends on what you're wanting to do with your vertex animation, so, like I say, completely up to you what you're wanting to do with it, so, and then of course the texture is fine. The frame rate, I usually increase it to 120, so that way it looks nice so but that's usually what i do with that we have the base model here and then now what i'm going to do is we're going to just add three basic animations now this is going to be from a, a asset pack i have but you can find free assets online and stuff that may have animations available and you could use those me i'm using some sword animations that i haven't found from online that are usable so what i'm going to do is grab those i want the idle I'm going to do an idle animation. So we got the idle right here. And then we're going to want to go ahead and find a simple walk. Walk forward. Walk forward generic. This is not root animation. We may want to do root animation just in case. So I'm going to do root animation version. Okay, root animation. So we, oh, okay, that's crouched. We do not want crouched. Okay, here we go. Walk forward. Here we go. So we want to put that one in there. And then last but not least, we go ahead and do the run. So run forward. There we go. Ooh, 
There we go. Yeah, we have everything that's needed. And for this one, you don't have to do root motion, but I'm just going to turn on root motion for my animations here. So there we go. So we save these. Now I'm going to do a step ahead usually because you can just bake in and everything be set up. I'm going to go ahead and make the material now that you that will be used later. Or maybe I should bake it. I'm going to bake it first, actually. We should bake it. So all right, we have everything set up. So what we're going to do is go back to our base model. In this case, basically, it would be the night right here. We go to the night mesh. We go to the night base. And then what you're going to do is you'll see a button right up here. This is bake animation. It's going to create the static mesh and the textures for it. So we just simply click bake animation. And then you give it its time. It bakes the animation. It creates everything. So now we have the static mesh created right here. And we have the textures that hold all the information for it right there. Now, to make sure and ensure that this works, what we would have to do is create materials. So in here, we're going to create a new folder. I usually do this. I just call it mat for materials. And then we're going to create a whole new base material. So I'm going to go M, and we're going to say default material. It's going to be default mat. All right. And then in here, this is going to be a very straightforward, simple version of it. Now, the way I could do it is in several different ways, which is, you know, pretty interesting, and pretty fun to do. But in this case, we're just simply going to hit the number three. Well, no, 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 we don't want that. My bad, my bad. But however, for later, if you're wanting to add colors and do variant with colors, you want to do something like that. But in this case, we just simply want to go ahead and get a texture sample. Work with me here. There we go. And then what we're going to do is convert this into a parameter. And I usually call it diffuse. You could call it base, base texture, base color. Um, I'm just going to stick with my usual diffuse because I worked with Total War modding in it, and that's the term they would use for this simple like base color. And then what you're going to want to do is find a texture that's a stand in. Basically, so that way you can create your different material instances and use it for all sorts of things, but just this one thing be a stand-in. So I usually, I think there's actually one called default. Default, like, let me see. Yeah, here we go, default texture, right here. You wanna grab that one up right there, just default texture. All right, so there we go. Now you have the thing made as default, and it's a parameter. There's a reason for this. Like I said, when we create the material instance, you'll see why I went with that. All right, and then the spectacular and roughness, we, I mean, we can make those zero. That's personally what I would do, just make them zero for now. Um, and then we're going to want to create the, we're going to get the uh, bone parameter. Yeah, see, bone parameter bones. I'm going to grab this, and then the normal, you want to plug into normal. And the offset, you're going to want to plug into offset. So far from remember, I don't think you have to plug in really any textures or anything like that to it. Um, with uh, the occupancy, basically, if you wanted to add occupancy, like a good example, like uh, you wanted to make it to where things are transparent, this is what I would tell you to do. Is basically we could just copy this one real quick, copy paste it here, and then rename it to Oc Mask is what I usually like to do. Basically, saying this is the mask to help it become transparent. You select the material, basically the default material here, and then you're going to switch it to, I believe, mast, if I remember correctly. And then you're going to plug it into occupancy mask. And as you'll see, it'll come slightly translucent, as you see here. So basically, when you actually are like creating textures and stuff that are meant to be kind of see-through in some parts, this is the way of doing it. And then what we'll do is, while editing this really quick, I realized I said occupancy, but actually it's supposed to be opacity. That's what I mean, opacity to make something see through. My apologies. And with the parameter bones thing, this is all you have to do. Is just plug in the offset and the normal into the respective locations right here, the normal right here at the offset. So straight, done, ready to go. Just hit apply, save it, and then we're gonna create the clone here of the default material. We're gonna duplicate it. I'm just gonna call it default material armor. Alright? And then we're gonna click here and Go ahead 
and I would say we can create one then go both in the metallic and this specular here and we could do is like a 0.5 and we're gonna call this I'm just gonna call it convert it and call it metal basically just the shininess of the metal of course in the spelling well it's not in the spell it's just one letter off okay and then with the roughness we can actually create another texture parameter if we want so basically and that would be the roughness and just call it such roughness there we go. and there you have it we now have this also set up as well so we hit apply save it and then save it here too I'm trying to think about everything if I remember right we're supposed to go into the static mesh as well and I believe we set it up the materials to actually work and so what you're gonna want to do is get the material instance for those oh wait no we don't No, that's right okay so we baked the animations that's all good to go see now we have the material slot set up so the body night material see it's right it's right here so what you do is basically with that because we have the armor look and stuff like that with it we're gonna want to right click here we're gonna create a material instance material instance and we will call it night base armor okay and then we're gonna find what textures are used for it so night we have texture variation yeah because there's several different kinds as you see right here we just get the texture texture for those so let's see clean steel seeing there's his body with clean steel so we're going to just go ahead and do this here oh yeah because we want to click on these to actually show where we want to edit things see bone position and then there's the normal and all that fun stuff so we go metal we could mess with that go to roughness here so we take the diffuse you just click make sure you make that the diffuse this one we can just turn to white because then it just creates a full on ready to go mesh so and then we got clean steel the normal and we have the roughness metallic so the roughness right there we plug this into the roughness boom there you go yeah it seems to be kind of doing an opposite effect from what I would desire hmm that's actually interesting uh, make it white let's see what happens if we make it white Okay, there we go it's kind of oh white actually just makes it like that okay then maybe you would actually want to just go black okay well there we go but the problem is it makes everything too shiny so you need specific parts to be set up in certain ways okay see so there we go well, I guess we'll just stick with that then and then that can remain white the normal, I believe you would just click on the normal here. Basically, you would go to the vertex animation, you would just click the normal, and then click the normal that you personally have. And that should help set it up to actually work like you intend. See, now everything's actually looking a lot better, but the armor still looks kind of dull. Um, we can crank up the metal, though. Yeah, that's really interesting. I'll have to look into that more, because see, the, the cloth is turning met metallic as the armor is not. So that's actually particularly interesting to me. Okay. Yeah, see, okay, there we go. That looks beautiful, but the problem is this, the, the, the cloth. But anyway, so we'll figure that out. But anyway, it's all right. We, we know we got that set up now. Now we have the armor set up and ready to go. Okay, so go back over to, yeah, see there's the different ones right there. He's got all sorts of stuff in here, but Okay, so we have the base knight armor now. Let's uh, set up. So from right, we would go over to knight base, and then right here with static mesh and instant static mesh, you would plug it in, I think, and actually, no, I think you just do it in the static mesh, is all you do it in. So that should do that. And then I think it might be ready. Like, I'm sorry if I seem kind of uncertain. It's just. This is me doing it on the run, basically just going strictly from memory. Looked up a few things to try to get like 
things to remember and all that. But okay, so we're going to I got, I got a file set up here. That we're just going to say it up data uh, objects. Just do something like this real quick. I usually like to make mine very set up. Um, units. Let's do units, and then next thing you know, within this, we're going to create a base unit. So I would say for now, he's gonna um, the creator of this plugin is going to actually create a thing where it will have its own movement system and stuff. So it's really cool he's going to do that. Can't wait for that. But for mm. now, I just use character. So we got the character here, and just simply create your oh come on, unreal. Anyway, I digress. Okay, rename to uh, BP, and we're gonna say this is going to become a uh, unit base. So. We'll just make it like that. I'm just going to go kind of an RTS format. Basically, because that's technically what I'm using mine for. So, in here. Okay, so now we have our basic thing here. But we're not worried about messing with too much of this at all. I would just say click on capsule component. And then we're just going to go ahead and look up. If I'm right, it's vertex. Yeah, vertex animated static mesh is what you're going to want to do. And then I'm just going to say base. Okay, base mesh, base mesh, right here. All right, and then you're gonna also want to get the vertex animation runtime. Now, you're gonna wanna plug in this, but there's one thing missing that we don't have yet, and that's the animation blueprint for this. So what we're gonna do is quickly, I'm just gonna create a whole new file here, and go add MBP. All right, and then here, we're gonna put the animation blueprint for it. So just got animation, animation blueprint. We have to select the skeleton we're using, which I believe this is the one. Yeah, this is the one. And a BP underscore. Yeah, so basically just get the skeleton. So unit base. Just call it that. I know it's a terrible. Move. We'll just get in there. And then also, let me set this up too. I'm gonna set up an enum real quick. There's a reason for this. You could do it through a boolean. Me, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it through an enum. Basically, and that's e underscore unit states, which basically is basically we're going to create three of uh, three states. Okay, which is idle, walk, and run. So all we're going to do is just create those states, and then in here we're just going to go ahead and simply go to variables, click create a new variable, call it unit states. And call upon that enum. So we just e underscore, and then unit states, and bam, there you go. Now it's an enum in it. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and create a new state. State machine. Actually, I should make that very clear. State machine. Machine, and then it's gonna just call it local motion. Motion, and just plug it in real quick. Come here. And then we're going to create the first state, which is idle. And then this is where we get into the animations. So if I remember correctly, what we do is we go ahead and plug in the animation we're meaning to. I'm trying to remember how you do this part. This part I'm kind of blanking on. Give me one moment. Let me check. Okay, I remember now. What it was is this. is basically you just go simply you type in vertex like you know get the vertex animation Ver, come on x animation and then it's going to have play animation you click on that you drag it over here you grab your profile add it here and from the list you select what you're wanting so basically boom there you go he's got his walking animation set up and ready to go so and then eventually you just continue on and add a new state walk which we'll do the back and forth between those. As a matter of fact, what's kind of nice is you don't necessarily have to always do the one. I could just go copy it, walk back over here, paste it, and then, yeah, just change the animation. Walk forward. And then we're going to drag out, do it one more time, add a state, and then we're going to say run. Okay, and then paste it again, grab the run, and then you should be good there. All right, now it's going to complain about the in-betweens. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, 
what we're going to want to do is get the state here. Boom. Get states. If it is equal, or actually in this case, equal enum. If state is equal to walk, then we can transition. So that's the first one there, hermetic one. I just copy it. Alright, and then you're going to bring it over here. And then eventually you plug it in right here again. Walk, and then you're going to go ahead and set it up to if it's equal to run, then do this. And then eventually we're going to set it up if it is not set up. Get the not boolean. And then we're going to say or. Actually, no, if it's set to walk or idle, let's do that instead. Instead of it or as, a, as that, you say if it's equal to walk or, walk or, or idle. Walk or idle, then you can transition back. Okay, and then basically what you do is you just simply state the same thing. If is equal to idle, then you can transition. Walker idle, so basically, yeah, basically it's just equal to idle. You know, basically, so this is this. And for this, it basically is equal to run. So walk or idle, and then idle. And then so basically, if it equals to walk, then it does that. I mean, you could probably do walk or run, and it would just transition and go through it. Then you can do that. So four. There we go. To run. There we go. Walking around it could transition to those. Okay. There we go. So running can only be accessed if it's set to run. So there we go. So there it is. I believe that is everything for this to be set up. So, okay. We go back to the base mesh here. Well, runtime component, you want to select this here. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Oh my goodness. And then you want to go here, anim class, and then you want to grab its animation blueprint. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to remember what's wrong here. Man. Ooh. That, that glitchiness. Like I said, it may be a little bit. Give me one moment. Okay, it's still messed up, but I wanted to bring up some things really quick. Also, another thing you want to do, considering this is a character file, is make sure that when you go ahead and set it down, for my, it's negative 90, right? And yeah, and I want to say it's even negative 90 rotation. is what you want to set it up to when setting up the character. Um, as you see, it's still not perfect. I'm working on that right now, on why it's not set up correctly. Let's really agitating I'm trying to remember why but yeah give me a moment I'll be, I'll be back okay I figured out what it is okay give me a minute it is I need to go all the way back hold on you have to put this part called iter hold on hold on iterization that's what it's known as No? Really, dude? Give me a minute to find what it's specifically called. Okay, hold on, just a moment. Give me one moment. Okay, so what it's called is this. It's um, in interization. Boom. Ink. You gotta have that right in the middle. Otherwise, there will be issues so far from what I'm concerned. I believe that should fix it. Let me go ahead and close it out, and then if I'm right, I should be able to go back into it again, and it should work this time. What is this? If oh, it still looks like the disc. Oh boy, this is a little more than I thought. Give me one moment. Forgot one of the most important steps. Baking the animation would be kind of nice. So there we go. So I bake the animation again. Save it real quick. Alright, so let's exit this because it's going to not really register what's been done now. Okay, so now that should all be, so far from what I understand, it should hopefully be okay.
Matter of fact, it's okay. Here it's showing it. It's working okay. There we go. So we're, that's step one. Step two is to see if it actually like legitly worked. Save. Okay. So as we see, it kind of looks all weird now. Debug. So it's it's there. You can see it. So if I hit simulation, what happens? Yeah. So we're still having some issues. I'm sorry for this, everyone. Like I said, I forgot about this whole thing. This is no fun having to chase this all down. Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember. Give me a minute. Give me one moment again. I'm so sorry for all the pausing. Okay, figured it out. One tiny important step I forgot about. You have to get, when setting up the material instance file, you have to turn on the HDR, the frame interpolation, as well as the columns that's how you get it to work and then as you see here we got a character standing around we can switch him to walk forward but of course he's not doing it because the animations thing is not set to do that so but there you go so as you see here this is the basics of setting up the whole system um i guess we could go ahead and do it just a little more so we will go ahead and set up the uh the variants. Give me one moment. All right, so we'll do some variations really quick just to show kind of how that would be kind of done. And then we'll halt there. And then what I'll do is probably go into another video explaining more, but it's probably going to be about a week or so before that one comes out. So like I said, we'll see. We'll see how it all works out for me. Am I able to come up with it later this week? I don't know. Like I said, things have just been kind of up in the air lately. So all right, let's go ahead and go back to the night equipment again. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got the head, we got short hair. Just go directly to the mesh, there we go. As we see, we got knight's head. Let's go ahead and just grab the knight's head face real quick. And we're going, what you're gonna do is go scripted assets, vertex animation, and then bake as a variant. This is what you're going to do with that one. So we click on knight base, we hit okay. And then what it's gonna do is now create a variant file for the knight's base. All right, and then in here, with the variations, all you do is, oh yeah, no, you don't add here, that's right. We just go back directly to the file. We go down and it's gonna add a whole new area for it. As you see, there's two materials that's actually added. There's the hair and then there's the face. So we'll just go ahead and grab both real quick. The original materials, we'll create those real fast and we should be good to go. So we have that, we have the defaults here. So we're gonna create a new material instance mi underscore head so we're gonna do that click on this and of course show everything cult mass we're gonna actually make that white because it's gonna be necessary for what we're doing well, unless he's got something for that we'll see head which I was just gonna go bald let's put some dirt on his face why not we'll put like the one with dirt a normal dirt. Okay, we'll do this. Okay, and is there anything else here? Um, well, besides turning these on, are the columns, and then last but not least, frame interpolation. Yeah, frame interpolation. Okay. So there we go. That's what's important. So, whoop. all right. So cool. We save that, and we're just going to add that to this. Not well, not to this, but to this. All right. So material head. We'll put that right there. My right face. It's going to be the head right there. And I guess we could duplicate it and create hair. Oh, it just means that. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I guess we could do two materials. Well, just click on this, I guess. Just say short hair. Yep, so, okay. And dirt. 
Oops, so I just do the same thing there too. So, okay. Now it's like both kind of bald. But anyway. <laughs> okay, sorry if I'm getting quiet here, everybody, but just trying to set everything up here. Okay, so now we do this, save it. And what's really nice is basically with the base mesh, we could just add another, not static mesh. We did not, I did not need to put another static mesh. Because it has to be specifically a vertex animation one. Vertex animated static mesh. And we're just going to call this head. Alright, do that. And then just go ahead and give it the runtime component. And we're going to select night face. There we go. As you can see, there's still some things like eyes and everything that need to be added, but nonetheless, there's our night head. And basically, we'll just add even one more too. Static mesh, and we can call it helm. And then this, this is all you have to do: is go into the file, do this stuff, and next thing you can create it. And then, like from the animation blueprint, you can actually call upon it to do certain animations. And I think we'll do that really quick, right before we close out the video. Because this is this is pretty much it in a nutshell. Is you just go ahead, go to the files that you're wanting to change up. Like basically, we have the helmet right here. Right click on it. We're going to go ahead and script it strings. Go ahead and go to this. Bake as a variation. Select your original file. It'll create the file. You go back here, and there is there it is now. Is that? I'll add it together. We're going to go back to here, and then it's going to add that. And so now we want to create the helm. I can even just duplicate this armor one real quick and just call it basically Knight Helm Helm 1. Click on the file, find our textures, and that's why I had you set it up as the parameters. It's because it makes it really easy just to be able to go ahead and switch out whatever you want. So, personally for me, that's always been very a big, big deal when going ahead and making these kind of things and stuff. So, equipment. Uh, helmets, textures, plant them there because that's the one that I said. So, take the veto, put that there. Boop. This is occlusion. Let's take oh, so this one's like several. So, okay, well, at least the chainmail looks shiny, but the actual helmet itself and the leather looks too shiny. So, it's pretty funny. That thing that needs to be shiny is not shiny, but we'll just run with it for now. All right, so we go back here. So on Helm, you go ahead and uh, I'll save, I'll save real quick. Grab the component, because it's all gonna be based off of that one, and then we just say Helm 1. Hey, why are you not animated with the rest of it? That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, because it's supposed to be animated with the rest. Oh, I know why, I'm a dummy. Because I didn't add the material yet. <laughs> Alright, but yeah, see, you gotta make sure to add those materials, otherwise the animations will not work. So we just slap that into the static mesh area, save it, and then we come back over here, file, and then save. There you go. And there you have it. We have our little knight. It's pretty cool. Like I said, it's a pretty cool system. I'm running with, and you can even hit simulation to see how it looks like animated. Okay, so right now he's supposed to be walking forward, but the reason why they're not walking forward is because I'm not calling upon the animations table. So let me go ahead and show you how to do the animation thing really quick. I'm going to actually pause the video, create the code, that way I can just show you what it is, and you can follow it really quickly. Alright, so here's the code for it. Okay, so basically, you want, I put a simple delay. This is off the begin play. Basically, so simple delay of five seconds. And then what you're going to do is call upon the vertex, uh, the, the, um, the vertex animation runtime. You get the anim instance. You just cast it to your animation blueprint. And then in the case of what I did, I, set, I went to the enum and I set it to the enum. And then you have to tell it to update the animation from the runtime here. I think I should clean up the code a little bit here. Make it look like this. Okay, so that's will update the animation. And then I told him to move 50 paces. Now, I know it's going to move more than 50 paces, or I tried it, and it's facing the wrong direction while moving the animation. So it's going to be kind of funny to see. So, But otherwise, um, 
He's not gonna move in the right direction. I'm just being honest right out the gate. So basically, boom. Okay. As a matter of fact, if we made him maybe go to zero, to like his original stance. As you see here, we hit play. So he's gonna go the way he's actually supposed to face. So now he's gonna go straight. See, but he won't stop at 50 paces. He'll just keep going. We go directly through the wall. Oh, he gets stuck on the wall. Oh, I, that's interesting. Okay. But as you see, the animation kicked in. So, and what I'm going to do is make it to where it's going to stop after a so many second delay. Because right now I have it going moving by root animate, the root, uh, root motion. So root motion is actually what's driving that, not the other thing. Because I actually tested it really quick to, to with just the extracted root animation. As you see here, like see, there's the options of none, extract, and apply. I could set it to none and see what it does. I mean, you can see, yeah, sure, why not? Let's give it a shot real quick. What do we got here? Yep, see, he won't move. Yeah, there's supposed to be AI applied to him to where he'd only move so far. Let me check the AI real quick. AI controller, yeah, see, basically it's just a simple AI controller. Yeah, that's what he's supposed to have, and he's just not really kicking in, so. It's all right, but this is just to introduce you all to the Vertex animation thing. So we're going to just copy all this kind of code right here. Just copy. As a matter of fact, I would encourage you when you're making a game, make that into a function. That's what I would argue. A function that could get called. Oh, I already did it. Brain farm here. Okay, and so he just goes back to idle after a delay. That's what I wanted to set it to is after a delay of like two seconds. So let's do that real quick. Two seconds. So file it, save it. We'll run it again. Your little character there. He's got a sword thing going. Oh, oh, I forgot to switch him. Funny. But yeah, like I said, once again, root motion mode, I'm going to put it on apply. Because the root motion will drive the character and move him around. So it'll be driven by root motion. It's really cool. He's going to be coming up with a spindle system and stuff as well, the guy making this, so... I definitely encourage you to check it out. I'll link him in the YouTube channel. His name is Thomas. He does a pretty good job. And you did not switch like I told you to after two seconds. All right, but it's all right though. As you see, it's working. You have a character moving around. You have some of the basics going on. So this is how you do it. I hope I was somewhat clear. I'm sorry for all the pausing. It's because, I, like I said, I'm doing this on the fly. This is not me going ahead and premeditating this. And I'm sorry for a really long video. Apologize again. Hopefully the next ones will be a little shorter. Um, but otherwise, you all have a great day. God bless you. And uh, the next video, like I said, I'm going to aim to try to teach you how to create a variation system using this. As well as maybe even try and incorporate kind of RTS kind of system. I don't know. We'll see. I think I'm going to just keep to the variant system because it's a little simpler to do. But otherwise, you all have a great day, uh, and uh, God bless.